We're just trying to change the world here, people. Oh, really? It's time for another good idea, bad idea. Good idea. Welcome back to O'Reilly Radio 135D. This is the Good Idea segment, recorded Friday, December 9th, 2016, where we dismantle the current events for your entertainment through mostly rational conversations that make you go O'Reilly. I'm your host, Andy Cowell, with my usual suspects. I've got Seam Gerth and Daniel Atherton back. Welcome back, gentlemen. And of course, if uh, if you find that we've uh, made any mistakes or uh, are just horrible people and you have to mention something to us, there is always an email address at o'reillyradiopodcast at gmail.com or for Seven zero two 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 six seven five nine. You can also uh, harass us on social media. We're out there too, so you should be able to find us. Okay, <clears throat> now some good ideas. We got three, three for this week. Japan uses QR codes to help track citizens with dementia. Ooh. Yes, you know we've been we've been following the whole dementia and uh, mental health beat for for a while now. So I'm glad to see that this is in good ideas. Yes. Uh, a company in Aruma near Tokyo has developed a tagging system for members of the public at risk of getting lost. Um, the one centimeter square stickers hold an address, telephone number, and unique identity number for each user. Uh, it is a free service launched this month and is a first for Japan. Uh, the initiative uses a system of QR codes uh, was set up to help reunite family members with their elderly loved ones in the event that they go missing. Um, huh. And the nice thing is that the stickers are water resistant and remain attached for an average of two weeks um, uh, and can be more discreet than other items such as badges as they can be attached to toenails or warm be- and warm beneath socks. Um, and again, Sometimes dementia patients, when they get lost, don't end up with clo- certain articles of clothing on. Um, those get true. lost too. So having a means of being able to quickly and conveniently identify somebody who who is in an unfortunate situation by having these QR codes, say, on a thumb or a big toenail. Um, can can be of immense use, not just for the patient and the families involved, but also this is a major help for um, public servants, law enforcement, when when dealing with these individuals because you can get the information quickly without necessarily the individual being completely lucid. This is pretty brilliant. I would love to see this uh, this go more. Uh... More uh, more wide, uh, cast that net over to the United States, for instance. But Japan is facing an aging population with more than a quarter of its citizens aged 65 and over, and that is set to increase to 40% by 2055, with the population expected to shrink from the current 127 million to 90 million in that time. Yeah. As um, in our article that I was reading that was more of just human wow. interest earlier in the week, uh, saying that, uh, that they're going to lose 37 million people. Yeah, because between now uh, lot, and, and 2055, a lot of people have entirely just given up on the concept of dating. Uh, oh, yeah. I, I read that article. I love that one. It's essentially what's happening in Japan now, if I may. Go ahead. Yeah. Is they have started instead of this whole being together and doing dating culture and everything else, essentially what has started happening is people are just simply marrying their long-term friends. Because Japan has had a, is in the middle of a breeding crisis is the best way to put it. And the fact of people just aren't getting married or having kids no. or any of that. So their population is actually one of the, one of their fastest declining in the world because of this. Yeah. Um, a lot of it is, is, hmm. Due to just how hard the Japanese work, um, a, a to put it in, un, in unfortunate terms, uh, your typical salary man uh, over there in in Japan. Um, I mean, we think we have a hard time with 40, 45 hour weeks here. They they can possibly be putting into up to 60, 80 hours a week. They don't have time to date. They don't have time to have a family. 
work-life balance is completely out of whack over there. Mm -hmm. Um, And then Hmm. societal pressures and everything else, who's got the time to date? And who has, who has, after being ground that far down, the willpower to handle rejection? Well, along those lines, it's, I listened to podcast, I believe it was Radio Lab, I was listening to, and they were interviewing uh, this guy who worked over there for a while, and he said, yeah, he had this, he worked in a host bar as an American. And he said, yeah, he had this, one of his favorite clients, who was this, you know, early 40s Japanese woman, who'd come in there and spend, you know, $300, $400, $500 an hour just to spend time with him. Yeah. And he was, he had to ask the question at some point, you know, why does why don't you have a boyfriend or everything else? And her whole thing was, yeah, I dated when I was like 18, 19, but then I stopped. And after college, I just got a career and she just didn't date anybody after that. She didn't, or really get with anybody. It's just go career hardcore. And now she's in her like, you know, mid forties and you know, no family, no husband, no children. <clears throat> wow. Who's got the time? <laughs> yeah, who's got the time? Well, I've I've apparently made the time, uh, but I'm just one of those stinky Americans. So, Japan's an interesting place. Interesting place. Yeah, with interesting is. problems. But speaking of time, that actually transitions well into our next article, which is U.S. IKEA employees will get better paternal leave. Um. Okay. I'm some. This is, a, this is a fantastic segue, actually, from that one. Um, again, IKEA listened to their employees. Um, one of the things that they, they, they have been pushing for, and finally the company has answered, is better paternal or, or paid maternity leave. Um, they are planning uh, start of next year. Um, if you've worked at Ikea for at least one whole year, you'll be able to take six weeks of fully paid paternal leave and there are six weeks at 50% pay. Oh, okay. Um, That's excellent. It's company, it's company wide. It doesn't matter if you're salary or hourly working at corporate or an individual store an expecting mother or an expecting father, LGBTQ straight adopting or fostering. Wow you'll have access to the policy. Uh, what's more, if you've worked with IKEA for more than three years, your paid time off increases to four months, eight weeks of full pay and eight weeks of half pay. Wow. I think I need to go eat some uh, Swedish meatballs. Um, again, work-life balance is a, a, a big big concern uh, as we continue on as a species um and while it might seem counterintuitive to let an employee leave the company for such an extended period of time but providing paid paternal leave has been known to be good for business it helps companies to recruit top talent and it significantly lowers costly worker turnover among many other upsides and as we've seen from previous shows, turnover can cost, oh, yeah. on average, $2,100. And that's, that's just in the replacement of the employee. That yeah. doesn't even doesn't talk training. about yeah, productivity downturn yeah. or downturn in overall morale. That, it doesn't measure those factors yeah i saw estimates of some of those costs being like eleven thousand dollars yeah every time you lose you lose a person and have to replace them you know that's kind of the cost so how many times do you want to do that in the, in the course of a year you, know, um, you want to be careful I, just, <laughs> with who you're I picking. don't understand a lot of american corporate culture or just business culture in general which act as a grinder you're costing yourself so much money in constantly having that turnover, constantly having to educate your workforce, um, and the loss in productivity for downturn morale. If you hate your job, you're not going to work well at your job. Uh, if you don't feel secure 
how are you going to concentrate on the work at hand? Um, it, it, it's, it's something that boggles the mind, and it didn't used to be this way. Uh, for that short, glorious time of when, as, as Trump wants to say, when America was great, mm. um, taxes were high in corporations, and, oh, look, uh, you could actually have one person working and supporting an entire family. Right, and, then, and, and this would qualify as money that's been put back into the company yes, as opposed this would to be out, of, out of profits. Re, so, yeah. Reinvestment. Yeah. Um, which investment save in the workers. Company money. Yeah. Just you know, giving those ideas out there, folks. You know, if you happen to own a business, uh, you know, taking care of your workforce is not a bad idea. They, you know, you take care of them, and they will take care of you. That does build loyalty. You know? Also, it helps attract top talent. Yeah. Uh, if you're wondering why, when you put out a an ad for work. That you're getting all these crazy people, bozos, what what have you. you. You feel like you're you're reading through applications of the dregs of society. Well, what is your company's reputation? Mm-hmm. You have to ask yourself that. Um, and what and, are you and, offering? You know, I mean, if yeah, if you want somebody good, you have to offer something good. Otherwise, they'll go elsewhere. Now, the other good news. Further good news for those at IKEA is they're looking at also introducing a new sabbatical program for employees that don't want to become parents. Oh, um, that's nice. So uh, those who who have you know like seven years of experience will be able to take more time off. Three um, months of unpaid unpaid leave. Now that's what sabbaticals are. They're unpaid leave. Yeah, but with a guarantee that their job will still be there when they come back, you know that'd be so amazing for people that actually want to travel well, and can't just... and can't because in do, in doing that they quit their job and then they might not have a job when they come back. I mean that's a huge thing. Or I mean, for instance, I mean, look at it this way: you take your paternity leave, you somehow stay with IKEA during that entire time as your kid is growing up. Mm-hmm. You've been with the company for multiple years. You hold on to that sabbatical time for when your kid is graduating high school. Oh. So you can do all that stuff for your kid. That help of transition from high school to college. That's a huge thing. And be able to take the time off to do that, to fully concentrate on helping your child in that transition would be huge. You know, I, I, I listen to a lot of podcasts because I drive all the time. And one that I listen to also, you know, I, I plugged a different one last show, but uh, last episode, but this, this is another one. This is uh, it's still untitled, The Adam Savage Project. Uh, it's, you know, out on Tested. And he was talking about, um, he was taking one of his sons to college. And what they did was they did an epically long road trip from California to New York. Wow. They took, nice. they took the long way, you know, and they stopped and they saw all sorts of things. Apparently they, uh, they took a route that uh, their mom had taken, you know, years and years and years before kind of recreating some of those steps along the way and, and, you know, building those memories between father and son on a big road trip like that, you know, he was, you know, the son was the navigator or they'd, or they'd trade off back and forth. And, you know, it's just a grand adventure. And of course he could do that because, well, he's in between assignments and now he's a self-made man and can do that. But yeah, this is the kind of thing that a sabbatical would allow you to do. And, you know? and again, it's that, that thing that we keep going back to work life balance. Um, and the studies keep showing uh, for any business owner that 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 listens to the show, I implore you. Um, I, I have read study after study after study of hi, you want to be incredibly successful. Cut back. I'm not saying the six hour day. I'm saying the seven hour day. Something that's done over in Germany. The only work six hours, though, you get a full hour for lunch. Why? Phone calls, checking up on kids, 
just taking the time mm-hmm. to center yourself so you can then attack. We're only good working six hours a day. That's when we're the most productive yeah. is a six hour day of work. That's where you're going to get the most out of your employees. Dragging it further just lowers productivity ha- and happiness. There are also, some, there are some people that can do other things. You know, a one size fits all doesn't always work. Um, like for me in particular, I would like four tens. Well, there's also you know, studies that show that that way I would expect- have that whole other day. Well, life expectancy actually goes up. If um, you have three days off a week that we we've, we've got studies now that show this. Oh, wow. Uh, no life expectancy. You're pretty much by having a a working, having a three day weekend every week mm-hmm. would increase your life expectancy by 15 years. Holy crap. <laughs> it's because you wow. can take care of your life. Yeah. It's also because. You need that third day, and the reason you need that third day, and it needs to be straight, is because the first day, you're just distressing. You're just yeah. finally getting out of work mode. Yeah, I, I recently took a couple weeks off, uh, because, you know, it's the time of year to do that. And yeah. I had grand plans to just attack things that I needed to do, projects around the house, you know, paperwork that I've needed to file for a long time. I, you know, I need to do estate planning and all sorts of, of crazy stuff. And for the first three days, I was absolutely useless. I got nothing done. It was just changing modes. It really was changing modes. And I hadn't taken that amount of time off in so long that it was, it was really changing a lifestyle change entirely. Yeah. So no, yeah. but you need that first day just to unwind mm-hmm. that, that, that second day is when you get to be you again. That's the restorative day. Yeah. And the third day you're already mentally and physically gearing back up for going into work. You may do other things. You may have fun. You may spend time with family, but you are already putting your body into a de- de-stress mode. It's it's just default. Um, that's what they're finding. Yeah. Um, so the no, same, the I, same thing with when you're going back to work, where Monday is a useless day. Tuesday, it's 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 pretty good. It's pretty good. It's getting better. Wednesday being, you know, really the most productive day that you're going to have, and then Thursday you're already starting to wear yourself out, and then Friday you're so looking forward to the weekend you get nothing done. Yeah. Um, but also that's another thing in cutting back hours and yeah. having that, that full hour lunch, that full hour break is it, 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 it helps you be more productive. Um, there's also been work studies. I've been really following into this on uh, uh, the concept of flow, which is when, when you finally are clicking at what it is you're doing. Oh yeah. yeah. Um, for most people, it takes 90 minutes before 90 minutes of working before they hit flow. And if you're constantly being interrupted, you never, ever hit flow. Yeah. But it takes 90 minutes on average to get into flow. And once you hit flow, you can maintain it for up to four hours. Yeah, I did that the other day. But then your body <laughs> will break out of flow just naturally. Sure did. <laughs> sure did. I was, uh, I was whipped after that. But it was a it was a very productive day. So you have yeah. you need an hour and a half to get into flow, mm-hmm. and then you get four solid hours of work accomplished, and then your body will naturally break out of it. That is precisely the timeline that happened when I had to uh, install a uh, a service center. I had nobody else there with me, and I had seven machines that I had to install, and you know, the full carts that had to be assembled and all the network and everything scratch, scratch job, whole thing. And yeah, it it took me 90 minutes to gear up, to get everything in line to what I wanted to do. And then it was just pound on it for four hours. And that's what studies keep showing. Um, Funny thing. 
a Business Insider article from a couple of months back. A surfboard company Mm -hmm. completely changed how they did business. They work a five-hour day. And they changed their mentality for every single position towards production, having a production mentality. Um, Five-hour day production day. Okay. Yeah. And they increased their profitability by $5 million. Okay. Um, And here's the thing. Not every day is a five-hour day. When you have those crunch times, you have people work longer hours when it's necessary. But when it's not necessary, you crunch down to a five-hour day. Also, you don't pay anybody hourly. Everyone's salary. Everyone. Mm. So you know that your your hours are going to flux. That the is time, a difficult thing. I was salary for several years and was abused by that. Yeah. And then a lawsuit came around, a big class action lawsuit, and the company that uh, – Not the company that I worked for then, but the company that bought that company changed everybody to hourly, non-exempt, available for overtime because they were sued over it. Because in that salaried position at those tiers, at every tier, those people got shat on heavily. So now only supervisors and above are eligible to be salary exempt. Again, that 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 is the predation of corporate culture here in the U.S. I know, but that was that was the way that the the law ended up stepping in and forcing yeah. their hand to do that. So to make everybody salary, though it would work out for some people, for some companies it wouldn't, you yeah. know, and it I, could I, end I, up being illegal for them to do. Well, I'm I'm just saying under this one instance, yeah. this company, this surfboard company. Changed everybody's salary. Most of the times, you're only working a five-hour day. Yeah. However, when their season kicks in, you work longer hours. But when season phases out, you only need to be in here five hours a day. Yeah. And when when asked, well, how does that affect your com- customer base? And they go, the customers adapt. Demand for our product is is where it's at, mm-hmm. and if they want what you have, they will adapt. In fact, because they maintained those five-hour days, the customers adapted to know that's precisely when we need to come in and would plan their days accordingly. Yeah, if if those are the work hours, those are the work hours. There are very few people that will demand it be, be longer. It depends on It depends on the business. It definitely depends on the business. Uh, yeah. Many of the many of the places that I service are seven a.m. to three thirty. It it sucks if you're an afternoon person, but boy, if you're a morning person and you can get your butt up to to go do what you need to do before work, yeah. y- you're golden. So it all depends. So yeah, again, it's uh, planning your day accordingly. So. It's interesting, and this is really fantastic news about IKEA. I'm I'm really a big supporter of IKEA. I I poo pooed them, you know, when I first uh, learned about them, thinking that it was mostly just like the old solder furniture, you know, all, you know, slammed together and would break on you in no time. But really, yeah, they've got some furniture that's like that. But I noticed that there was very much a, a graduated scale of if you pay more, you get a better product. It all yeah. depends on what your what your market is. If you don't have the whole lot of money, but you still need that piece of furniture, you're going to find something. But if you have more to spend and you have more refined tastes or different requirements, they've got that too. It's big. They're big stores. Lots of products. Oh, yeah. So there's something for everyone there. So And, and apparently uh, something for everyone that works there too. That's fantastic. Really love the, the whole sabbatical idea. Oh, and... Oh, let's see. Nikola Tesla back in the news. Well, at least his Wardenclyffe uh, lab. 
is back in the day. Yeah, so oh. wonderful thing. Uh, the Wardenclyffe Lab, for anybody who knows, the Nikola Tesla, wonderful inventor. Screw Edison. Um, he was a screwball, but he's our favorite screwball. <laughs> he yeah. invented a lot of stuff that we now use nowadays. And But his lab, the big one that you always see in the pictures of, had a giant tower in the background. His lab, over time, was basically let go to waste and was partially destroyed. Uh, what has happened is there's been enough money thrown at this because the idea of people wanted to get together and make a Nikola Tesla museum. And basically want to take his lab at Wardenclef, which is one of the last ones he's got that still exists, and re-up it, recondition it, rebuild it, and make it a wonderful museum site to show everything he did, all this, and give him the recognition that, honestly, he deserved. Well, on Sunday, uh, the American Physical Society is going to present a plaque to Wardenclef and declare it a world historic site that will raise, of course, its awareness of physics and commemorating past scientific progress and pay homage to Tesla's incomparable achievements. So, yes, he died a while ago, but he's finally getting what he deserved for so long. And funnily enough, one of the major contributors to this uh, has been Elon Musk. Mm-hmm. The owner of Tesla Motors, um, and and also the, the guy uh, that uh, uh, that does the the oatmeal. Yes, <laughs> different guy, obviously uh, not <laughs> not not Elon Musk. No, um, but yes, uh, uh, Tony Stark is paying heritage to Howard Stark, essentially. Kind of, yeah. It's kind of <laughs> like that. $3.5 million in donations and grants among contributions from Elon Musk. Uh, two years ago, pledged $1 million towards the rebuild. Yep. Because yeah, I also remember back in the day, because um, they were just thinking of going, say, because it, it was a super fun site. That was a piece of land that had the stuff on it, and they were just going to look at walking in and just, you know, over putting up the stuff in there when that plan was announced that that was an idea that was going to happen i remember that there was this huge push going no we need to buy this land and you know purchase it and make this museum because it's the last lab that he had that's still intact and yeah over eight hundred fifty thousand dollars was raised three years ago to purchase that land and this is what's finally coming of it it's finally it's finally getting done so you can also go over to the Tesla Science Center dot org, which has everything. You know, it, it is the the proper site for the for the site. Uh, and apparently, the, oh, there's some neat stuff. Tesla preview out on uh, PBS. Okay, interesting. So yeah, I would uh, definitely recommend uh, heading over there. Um, July tenth of this year was Nikola Tesla's 100 would have been Nikola Tesla's 160th birthday. So that's uh it's been a while. It's been a while, but definitely getting getting some amazing work done here in the uh in the history of one of our famous and uh just instrumental inventors. So who was an immigrant? Yes, Serbian. D- Serbian immigrant um Fell in love with a pigeon. He was an eccentric. Died penniless in a hotel. Yep. Yep. But, uh, yeah. Interesting man. Very interesting man. Most of his, uh, his ideas, like, came to him just, you know, like, in flashes in his, in his brain, at least according to, uh, some of his own accounts. So fascinating absolutely fascinating if you don't know who nikola tesla is well geez get get to work you got the google machine in front of you go do that okay so if you've enjoyed what we've done here you can help us out there are about four ways there's probably more than that but at least four ways you can donate to the show through patreon.com slash oh really radio and that'll get you early access to full show show content and uh, i'm working on some other things there too well we'll see how it goes also um you know we could definitely use some more reviews out on itunes which will always help the show gain audience because itunes is where it's at definitely let me know if you 
drop a review out there. That way I can give you a shout out. Also, how about you tell somebody about us? You know, word of mouth advertising is always fantastic. And of course, you can talk to us, engage us, send us messages on social media or the electronic mail at Podcast at gmail.com. Or if you're the more talkative sort, there's always the phone number 470-222-6759. It's always ready to take your call or your text. Thank you for choosing to waste your valuable time with us. This has been O'Reilly Radio, part of the Random Axe Company. This work is licensed under the Creative Commons Attribution 3.0 United States license, with the exception of the music created by Kevin McLeod of CompTech.com, who holds the copyright thereto. <laughs>